DPS authority for setting the policies and rules on how they do it, but again, the agency has the responsibility for procuring them. And the policies set forth are found in the construction and related professional services manual. Highway construction is the responsibility of VDOT, roads and bridges. We actually have VDOT here in the room, so if you have any questions specific to that, we will have my coworkers there. So we talked a little bit about higher education and the levels that they have. They refer to them as three levels or three tiers. You have tier three, which they have total autonomy, including procurement. Tier two, where some have autonomy and procurement, capital outlay, or IT. And then tier one, they still follow PGS and VDOT rules. We've included in here a breakdown. We have five universities now that are tier three and have total autonomy, including procurement. We have George Mason, who has this new one in the Appropriation Act that's kind of called 2.5, which they have authority and autonomy and procurement. And then you see a breakdown for your level twos. We have five universities that have it in procurement and technology, and then we have Christopher Newport and VCCS that has it in capital outlay and technology. So for non-technology procurements, those agencies are still under VGS's purview. And then you have Norfolk State, Richard Bland, and Virginia State University that are still a level one university that fall under DGS and VDOT. Local public bodies, the interesting piece here is they have exemptions carved out in the VPPA. So you have about 50% from the last study we did or survey we did that say they follow the VPPA in its entirety. You have about 50% of localities that have exempted themselves from the VPPA and established their own ordinances. Now with that exemption, they still have to follow certain rules that are set forth in the exemption language. So Delegate Murphy, back to your question. The general methods of procurement, we have competitive sealed bidding, often referred to as an invitation to bid, where the award is made to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. Based solely on the specifications set forth in the IFB, no discussions or negotiations. If they're responsive and responsible, we award it to them, the low bid. Competitive negotiation for non-professional services and professional services is a request for proposal, negotiations are conducted, and you award to the highest ranking offer. This allows the Commonwealth to achieve best value. So a little bit of a distinction in the non-professional services to professional services. With non-professional services, you can actually enter into negotiations with two or more. With professional, you start with the highest ranked offer, you either award or conclude and move to the next one. It's not multiple negotiations at the same time. Small purchase currently is set at 100,000, and this permits agencies and DGS and VITA to establish small purchase procedures. As I mentioned, for professional services, it's set at 80. This is an informal purchase procedure. Competitive sealed bids or competitive negotiation is not required, but you can still seek competition, and the dollar thresholds have been established by both DGS and VITA. And currently, that's $10,000. Up to $10,000 is a single quote. Beyond that, competition is sought. Mandatory sources as established by the General Assembly. We have Virginia Correctional Enterprises, which offers a host of goods for state agencies, and they must go to them first to procure those goods that they offer, or they must receive a waiver, and then they can procure it in the open market. DBVI, Blind and Visually Impaired, they also offer goods and services that our agencies are required to use first before seeking competition in the open market. VITA has their mandatory statewide contract and services that they provide as a part of their powers. DGS also has a wide variety of mandatory sources, which includes the Office of Graphic Communication. Anything greater than 750 should come into that office. An exemption can be granted if needed. Office of Fleet Management, we offer fleet management services throughout the state for all state agencies. The Virginia Distribution Center is a bulk distribution center that handles bringing in leverage buying power and then shipping back out to the state agency. Janitorial supplies, cleaning supplies, and things like that. And then, of course, DGS has mandatory state contracts. Many of our state contracts are optional, but there are a few that are mandatory because of the leverage buying power. 
Restructured higher education, as we talked about earlier, can use those contracts, but they also have their own that they buy off of. Small business advancement, Executive Order 35, Governor Northam in, introduced that in July of 2019. It rescinded the previous executive order, and a couple of changes were made. Not many, but it took professional services from 50 to 80 for the set aside. Small purchases up to 10,000 are currently set aside to a micro. Procurements 10,000 to 100 are set aside from award priority to a certified small. And then, as I just mentioned, professional services are at 80. The price must be fair and reasonable and within the agency budget. Greater than 100,000 agencies are required to include a small business subcontracting plan. So in instances where we're seeking competition and we're making the award, we want to make sure they are also leveraging small businesses. Vendors must include in their bid to be considered responsive their small business subcontracting plan. And they must then return that as we continue to move forward and we evaluate that prior to executing the rules. Methods of construction procurement. This has been a topic that there are several folks here that may want to weigh in at some point. The main method is design, bid, build. The majority of the procurements in the Commonwealth for construction are design, bid, build. Design it, bid it, build it. Traditional method, owners contract with the A&E to design it, then owners contract with the construction contractor through competitive sealed bidding. Contractor constructs the facility. In 2017, the General Assembly passed a law creating a new chapter, 43.1, which is the use of construction management and design and build. So construction management at risk is for complex projects. The owner contracts with an AE to design the project. The owner then contracts with the construction manager through a two-step competitive negotiation. Construction manager provides pre-construction services to the AE to assist with the design and constructs the project. Design build uses a relatively is used relatively for simple projects with easily defined requirements. The selection is a two-step RFQ and RFP process. The agency contracts with a design build contractor to design and construct projects for a fixed price base upon the, the defined set of criteria. Complex is actually defined in 43.1 and they are listed here. Difficult site location, unique equipment, specialized building systems, manufactured programs, historic designation, intricate phasing. Some other aspects make competitive sealed bidding not practical. For state covered institutions and local on CM and DB, they all must follow chapter 43.1. So if you remember earlier, where I mentioned the restructured higher education had the autonomy, this is where they're actually brought back in and follow the same set of rules as state agencies. They have to follow the 43.1 and the Secretary of Administration procedures. Local governments only have to be consistent with the procedures. Effective January 1st, 2020, DGS updated the SOA procedures. Some of the changes that we just recently made was increasing the threshold to use construction management from 10 to 26 million. This was based on inflation over the years. We increased the minimum number to be shortlisted from two to three in the RFQ process. We added language that requires the shortlist to include a minimum of one DSBSD small business that meets the minimum requirements. We added requirements that the RFQ evaluation process shall evaluate an offeror's experience for a period of 10 years. And added language that would permit the responses to the RFQ and RFP to be be received electronically. And we added language again, not only to the local governments are required, required to be consistent with, we are now encouraging them in our procedures to follow them. CMDB, state agencies that are under our purview, they follow, they follow our rules. Covered institutions, as I mentioned, they can develop their own procedures but it has to be consistent with the law and the SOA procedures. At that point, once they've developed those procedures, they come into DGS for review. We can make recommendations, but we cannot have them change. We cannot force them to change them. Their board of visitors do have to approve them. And again, as I said with locals, they have to just be consistent with. As a part of this, 
interests and that the interest that's associated with the use of CMMDB. We have stood up a website that will take you to all of the current projects that have been reviewed by DGS. And I'm hoping that this thing works. Okay. Project that has been sent in by covered, inst covered institutions and state agencies to use the method of CM or DB. You can look at the report, you can look at the building name, you can download our results and our findings. It's all right there for public transparency. Moving on from that, I wanted to mention briefly our Commonwealth Electronic Procurement System, known as EVA. It was implemented in 2001, and it's Virginia's online central electronic procurement system. It's web-based for state agencies, college universities, and local governments. <coughs> it is the one source for vendors to use to find opportunities in the Commonwealth. Um, it is a valuable tool for both the buy buyers and the vendors of the Commonwealth, and even provides sourcing and contracting functionality, public posting, so if we have an opportunity that's available greater than 10, it's open to the public. Anyone can find those opportunities. Vendors can register for the tool at no charge to receive notification of set opportunities. Suppliers manage their own account. They have their own login. They're able to respond to electronic opportunities, update their addresses, and find opportunities to respond. They can also run public reports to help them know what other agencies are buying and what opportunities they may have. We also built for the General Assembly a quarter portal that I think is very effective to show orders by Secretariat. You can drill down. You can do a vendor lookup with order details. You can search by keyword or government to government. And hopefully this one will work. Secretariat, you can see fiscal year to date, FY20, you can click into that Secretariat and pull every order. You can see previous orders for the past 30 days by Secretariat. This is updated on a uh, daily basis, so at any given time you can check the purchase orders that have been placed in the system. Department of Human Resources, VITA, DGS, the Compensation Board, and then a statewide VITA as well. This is the SWAM breakdown for the administration and where their SWAM dollars have gone for the past 30 days. If you click on any given agency, it will then drill into the SWAM breakdown for DGS for those past 30 days. Okay, so this concludes our very quick presentation and I am available for questions. Thank you very much. Uh, committee members, any questions for this presentation? <laughs> and Carl would like to, uh, I know I haven't been on this um, uh, subcommittee for a while, uh, I think it might be helpful for those who haven't been on here before 
If you could give an example, like of say the complex, you know, the three different types of, of procurement and construction and so forth, that would just give us an example. Or the construction yeah. contracts? Uh -huh. So where, you know, an example of who used that where kind of thing. So right up the hill, the General Assembly building is being done as construction management. It's a very complex project with a lot of elements associated with it. So that's being done as CM. Um, Morrison Road, however, in contrast to that, is a historic property, but we are doing that as a design build, not construction management. Um, and then, At the other end of the clock. Yes, ma'am. And then parking decks are a great example and very, very simplistic design bid build. Um, and some routine buildings, office buildings, can often be design bid build. As I said, the majority of our construction projects, based on the data in the ebook, indicates that design bid build is still the preferred method of doing competitive sealed bidding for construction. The report I linked you to, I think at the last look, there was about 38 to 40 CMDB, and that's over a two year period. So there's not a great deal. Universities, DGS, those that have a lot of construction and a lot of high dollar construction often turn to CMDB when it's appropriate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, also, I'd like to just have some committee members who've maybe been involved in this area, maybe not on the committee, but been uh, it, maybe uh, in this, not necessarily on the subcommittee, but in the committee. Maybe an important learning that you've had having been on this committee, because I know some people accuse us of being boring and uninteresting <laughs> and stuff. But you know, we're we we really do really crux really important stuff in government. Absolutely, so, procurement well, touches yeah. everything. <laughs> so much, um, Sandra Gill, for your presentation. Appreciate it, and we look forward to drawing on your expertise as we move along. Any other thing from committee members? So just, uh, we do have, I guess, some new members of the committee, and 
I've had, as the chair has indicated, that some all of us have had different areas of experience in this matter. I dealt with it on the school board in Chesapeake. I dealt with it in the law practice. I've dealt with it in courts. I've dealt with it in this committee. And it's a every evolving um, area or body of uh, legislative content. Uh, it may be dry from our perspective, but it attracts a lot of attention from the private sector. Uh, it's a lot of interest, and it's something that I don't think we can at any one point in time say we have it right and can leave it alone for five, even 10 years. Uh, because the goal is to create an atmosphere where we get the best product uh, while uh, by and large using uh, public funds uh, to spend in the private sector. So we want to have that playing field fair, but also balance it against um, being a good product. So it, it really is very important work, uh, and I appreciate the opportunity Thank you so much. Can we get a message? Anyone else?